welcome back to the Monolith Film Podcast. I am your co-host, Lee Byrne. Joining me as always is the illustrious and always wonderful Nicholas Gillum. Say hi, oh, Nick. Such a charming introduction. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, joining us again in quarantine is my brother, Joey. Welcome, Joey. Hi, thanks. And for the first time back in uh, a while, since her, I think, right? I think so, yes. Uh, Halen Nicholson. Welcome how's, back. How's it going? Pretty good, you? Pretty good. So I forgot you were on here. You've been on three podcasts now, Halen. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Oh, this, is third one. this one should be the best one then in the trilogy. Yeah, this is my turkey. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, today we are doing Honey Boy. Written by Shia LaBeouf, directed by Alma Harrell. It mm-hmm. came out last year, right? 2019, I think it premiered. Yeah. Um, was this everybody's first time watching it? Yep. I mean, this was, this was my second or third. Okay. Um, this, was, uh, this was your recommendation, correct, Halen? Was it? Yes, this was Halen's idea. Very cool. I guess so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I could contribute. Um, well, what did everyone think? First impressions? Just a quick one, too. What did you guys think? Whoa, not, not everyone at the same time. <laughs> Sorry for Joey. <laughs> <laughs> too polite on this one. <laughs> Halen, you want to kick us off? Yeah, sure. Um, well, the first time I kind of got robbed of the, uh, the whole cinematic effect, because I watched it on the airplane. So like, I didn't get uh, best sound, best video quality, but uh, I did quite enjoy it. I think... Uh, this is first of uh, the Beefs movies, I, I think, that he's written and directed. So he did uh, not direct it. He didn't direct it. Oh, it was a, yeah, it was Alma Hamel or whatever. Yeah, he just. Um, I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't quite sure what to expect going into it, but uh, I was very pleasantly surprised. I uh, caught myself uh, tearing up a little bit towards the end. Yeah. Um, yeah, I very, very much enjoyed the movie. Cool, Joey. Initial thoughts. Um, yeah, <clears throat> I thought it was a. Uh, a nice delicately light touch on uh, some serious subject matter um and i was you know i was kind of uh, excited to see what shia labeouf would uh would put out as his sort of like his writing debut i guess it's sort of like autobiographical right yeah almost almost entirely uh up to just the change of some character names and stuff like that um I liked it. You know, Shia has been a, an interesting character in the whole uh, Hollywood scene for the past few years now. So, uh, I was Probably pretty ex- decade, yeah. Yeah, so I was pretty excited to see what uh what his next, you know, big thing would uh, would be. You said they were changed the name slightly. I was kind of glad that he gave the his character some weird name too, Otis. It kind of worked. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. What did you think of this, Lee? Um, I thought it was all right. I thought it was a little long, though. Yes. I do think this definitely could have been like a 30-minute short. Yeah. That kind of goes in with the director's usual stuff. I think she's a music video director. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so you'd expect these kind of... Like, you kind of get the aesthetic of it, the kind of neon colors, dark at night, and always this kind of shallow, handheld, moving kind of camera. Around. Well, I guess it's more of a floating kind of camera, but it feels, or it looks very much like some kind of a rap music video that you'd see now. So what do you think? I got issues with this, but I don't want to oh, yeah. run out. But, All uh, right. <clears throat> Let's, uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and give the... Uh... The viewers at home who haven't seen the movie, a quick little rundown synopsis. Um, This is a story written by Shia LaBeouf. It is uh, semi-autobiographical, is his, in his words. Mm -hmm. Um, It's about the life of a young boy actor who deals with an abusive father, ends up going to rehab where he writes a script uh, for therapeutic reasons. And then uh, that's it. Pretty much? Yeah. What, uh, what made you uh, enjoy it so much, Phelan? What, what kind of what got you? Is it the sentiment of it? The story itself? You know, I've been following the beef for a while in like the tabloids and like I knew he had stuff going on with him, but this kind of gave me some closure with what was really going on. And I thought I did enjoy 
cinematography, like just how it looked. I thought it was really neat, but just like kind of gives them like Shia LaBeouf to me, more of like dimensions to him. Mm-hmm. So I always knew he was a cool guy. Like I watched his Hot Ones interview, um, the Chicken Wing on uh, yeah on YouTube, and I thought he was such a cool dude. Um, and then I got to watch Honey Boy, and it kind of just kind of rounded him out as a person. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know, I kind of because it is it's tough to watch dealing with such like heavy subject matter, but I think he did it. He kind of explained himself in a really nice way because it's kind of like the way they split up when it's young Otis back and forth with old Otis. It's kind of like the cause and effect of it, you know, of like, yeah, is that PTSD? Mm-hmm. So I thought the whole thing kind of just, it was really just well-rounded and like it kind of explained his whole deal as an actor and as a person. Um, but the first time I did watch it, I thought, I didn't know that it was autobiographical at all. I thought it was his critique on Hollywood and his dad was kind of the personification of his like issues with Hollywood. Oh. How it changes you as a person and how it expects and demands like these like parts of you that aren't really who you are. Cause there's a line in the movie where he's like, um, his dad is talking to him, talking to Otis about his career and how he lies for a living. I thought that was kind of cool. And that's why like the whole thing kind of just, kind of just flowed really nicely. And I thought it was just like such a cool movie to watch. It was sad sometimes. It was funny sometimes. It was like a little bit of romance with the girl across the road there at the the motel. Yeah, that was. I thought that was weird though. She's, yeah. she's definitely like, <laughs> you know, old. Well, she's definitely a teenager, right? Yeah, like sixteen, yeah. seventeen. So it's not like he's like what twelve. Well, still, I think she's supposed to be a prostitute too. Okay. okay. Um. He did hand her money yeah. after they cuddled, which I thought was funny. I thought she'd be offended. <laughs> Yo, I ain't cuddling for free. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's interesting. Um, I I kind of went the opposite way, Halen. I I had heard about Shia being in rehab mm-hmm. and starting to write a script about his own life. Mm-hmm. That was like, part of his exposure therapy, eh? Like that was yeah. Like I kind of I followed. Like I've been following the movie since Shia was in rehab. Mm-hmm. It took me this long to watch it because uh, it's hard to I'm get lazy, I guess. Was, I think that was 2017. Yeah, he was in rehab in 2017. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I I knew right away going into it that it was autobiographical, mm-hmm. and you know that's why I was I was hoping to see that because I had known uh, previously about all the issues he had with his father and stuff like that. Um. But yeah, it was a good movie. But um, I don't know. I felt like I wish, like I wish there would have been more stuff. Like it, I don't know. It felt like a, a lot of it could have been cut. Honestly, it did when it did start to wind down when they went to go uh, check out his father's dope field that he was growing. Because mm-hmm. that's kind of where it tail ends, and like I didn't expect it to end there. Like it kind of like the credits started rolling after. I'm like, oh, that's it. Like I feel like it kind of ended abruptly. Like there wasn't really like they had their moment there. They had their closure. Yeah. Um, the movie Wait, kinda, doesn't like, it doesn't it end with uh, old Otis telling his dad he's gonna yeah. make something about him? Like that's where it kind of like that's where like the montage happens, where all, like the the funky music and stuff like that, and then he comes to tell his dad. Right. Uh, but even then, there's still no redeeming, like there's no redeeming quality of the father, and the son still just seems kind of whiny the whole time. Well, maybe that's it. Like that's what he's trying to. I doubt he's gotten any closure with his dad about anything like that. Mm-hmm. But I mean, uh, well, this, I think they have. You think? Apparently they have. Yeah. Yeah. They're on good terms. Now they talk every day, apparently. What a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I think this is an interesting movie because of the way it like it was born, like it's inception. Like it is very much just like a therapeutic device. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like Shia didn't make this movie to make money. He didn't make this movie to become a screenwriter. He he wrote and produced and made this movie solely for therapeutic reasons. Yeah, it was, it was like you a can definitely tell. Yeah, and you can definitely tell, and mm-hmm. I appreciate that about it, and that I like the story and the sentiment, and it was very emotional. Um, but was it a good movie? I don't know. 
Yeah, you know, that's the thing. I mean, even if you're trying to make something for therapeutic reasons, you're still putting this out for the public to watch. There still yeah. has to be some kind of narrative. And like you were saying before, Halen, when the credits were rolling, you were kind of surprised that that was the end of the story. Mm -hmm. uh, I felt the same way. Like after an hour and a half in, I felt like this is where the story would start kicking off. Like it's almost the scene is set now. Now we can get into the real story. It felt like that whole hour and a half should have been the first 20 minutes of the movie. Okay. Yeah, but I guess it's hard because, I mean, you know, that we're at a point, like if it's autobiographical, we're at the point in Shia's life where that's fucking today. So like that's, what I, that's what I was going to ask. Like, how old is Otis at that last scene? But yeah. also the fact that he comes to tell his dad and they sit and they reconcile. Yeah. Then the movie doesn't serve a purpose anymore. Like the movie was from his life where he developed the PTSD until the moment he was able to speak to his dad. Like, hey, like, I'm making a movie about you, you know? Yeah. So I guess everything after that point, like, isn't really worth sharing because it's unapplicable to, like, the subject matter, you know? Yeah, but I mean, even then, for a movie like this, I think for it to be a, a whole work, you'd almost need something 10 years later for him to make a part yeah. of this. And like we get a resolution. Like an life or something. Because we're still missing the story. We don't have any story here. We just have a relationship. Mm-hmm. Okay, I see what you mean. Like, out of all the, the things we're seeing, we're just seeing instances in their relationship together. We see when they he says, oh, you have to be better to me, Dad. And then the dad slaps me. You go, oh, that's pretty sad. And then, oh, he's hugging uh, the prostitute who lives across the motel. Or he's on, like, the Transformers set flying around. Mm -hmm. Like, these are all just, um, like, moments of his life. There, there's nothing. The only tie together is the relationship with the father. But even then, that's all it is. There's no story there. Yeah. What would you guys think of the look? You talked about it a bit, Halen. You enjoyed how uh, how it looked and felt. Yeah, it's kind of funky. Like uh, especially the, I almost thought towards the end of the movie it was a dream sequence. That's how like eerie it felt. Mm -hmm. um, and, like you mentioned, like the neon lights and stuff like that, and uh, like his, uh, I felt like his onset life and his offset life. There was always like a kind of gloomy look to it, or like a hazy look to it when he's on set. And I thought maybe that's, that was uh, him pointing towards like his discomfort that he always had when his dad was watching over him, trying to do his job and that whole weird dynamic. But I thought they kind of split the movie like physically so we can see it. I feel like they split it pretty well between past and present, offset, off, onset, past and future, stuff like that. I yeah. thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, but there was a significant amount of tone shift between each setting while still maintaining a consistent style throughout the film. That, that style, though, I'm, I wasn't too into it, though. It still felt very music video to me. It kind of gave me, like, indie movie vibes. Like, it's, like, it's not an especially, like, standout kind of movie. Because I feel like the genre of the movie, for in Shia's eyes, it's just his therapy that he got it from so there's no really reference to it like the kind of movie it is but if i could i'd put it in like an indie flick yeah genre and that that kind of like all those neon lights and all like the hazy like it's almost like a, a blade runner kind of like that you know like that weird dystopian kind of dark kinda, neon yeah you know interesting i think the the tone overall of the movie i think is great it really goes hand in hand with the what's going on on mm -hmm. screen but like there's no standalone images really in the movie except for maybe the opening shot where he gets shot back with the uh mm -hmm. the ropes and everything the explosion i don't want to uh, jump ahead to our uh, favorite shot section of the show but i think uh maybe a few of us would pick that shot but other than that it's mostly just kind of you're moving around this world going through it like yeah. i, I kind of i would have liked a few more wow images in it um, I wonder how much that had to do with budget. Cause I don't, I, I'm not sure he has a lot of listed producers, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure what the budget was for this movie. And I can't imagine it being very big. No, no. But I feel like when you, when you get, like you said, that music video vibe, mm -hmm. most low budget movies these days fall into that trope because it's easy to make a pretty movie yeah in that style with a low budget yeah well it's like we were talking about with um antiviral where you kind of put the shallow lens so that you don't have to set the world 
but right. the blur of it kind of sets it for you. This movie yeah. is very shallow when it's moving around, but then there's those few deep focus shots that are very cool, like the the opening one where he gets shot back with the uh, the ropes. Oh, I like that shot. I thought that was awesome. I like that too. Yeah, doesn't he do uh, it twice too? Once when he's a uh, once when he's old Otis, once when he's young Otis. Yeah, well, there's the uh, pie in the face shot. I think is a yeah. similar one. But he still cool shot. He, fl- he still flies backward for some reason. Yeah, he gets blasted by that fucking cake. I guess. Yeah, uh, I read. Uh, I read somewhere that that's uh, the one where he the scene where he's having that like really extravagant dinner for one of the scenes, and the scene where he gets a pie in the face. That was a nod to uh, even Stevens. That's what I like, assume. Yeah. There's actually uh, a lot, a lot, a lot of references to even Stevens mm-hmm. in the documentary. Um, almost every scene where they're filming for whatever, you know, Otis is acting in is a young direct re- Yeah, young Otis is a direct yeah. reference to uh, an even Stevens episode or even more than one, you know, spliced together. I'm unfamiliar with that. Do you guys mind uh, enlightening me? Well, there's one that stands out. Uh, to me is when he's reading his lines in the motel room with his dad. Um, his dad is saying like, uh, what are you doing in there? Like I need the washroom or whatever. And he's pretending to lift weights to like curl, uh, weights. And he's like, I'm busy right now, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, that's just almost, almost word for word. What a shot from, uh, an even Stevens episode. Okay, I meant like the show itself. I'm unfamiliar with. Like, that's a Nickelodeon show or something. He was in. Yeah, it's like I think that was like his first. It's, uh, it's Disney, no? Because he was a Disney kid. Maybe. I have no idea either. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's before I our just, time, I think. The other shot, like everything, when he's an adult, that he shoots is a Transformers reference. I think. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I don't know why my mind went right to Eagle Eye. <laughs> like, a the super, fuck is Eagle Eye? <laughs> it's one of his movies he did, like uh, after Transformers. That's is that with. Um, uh what's her name's in that movie oh and my it, god yeah it's uh you know it if you saw it i so vaguely remember this was like the ai like trying to help him and like it's like a twin brother who's in the marines or something like that um michelle monaghan or monaghan oh, maybe yeah is the girl in it i like Kyle labeouf as an actor though i think he's fantastic yeah I like him too, yeah. yeah he's I very like, good. Uh, he, was, he was very good in Fury. Have you guys seen American Honey? No. That's another honey title. That's good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Fury I was would, good. Yeah, Fury, Fury was good, yeah. Very good in Fury. Yeah. Um, do you guys know about Peanut Butter Falcon? Yeah, I just watched it. it. Um, that, the guy in that, Zach, uh, Zach Goths again or whatever. Okay. The, uh, I think he has Down syndrome or something. Mm-hmm. Um, he apparently was like a huge influence on Shia getting clean recently. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, um, the actor. Yeah. The act. Yeah. Uh, like their friendship and the relationship they built together apparently has like influenced Shia's life like more than anything else he said. Mm -hmm. So I was hoping for some of that in this movie. Uh, but it kind of ends right before that chapter of his life, mm. right? Which was disappointing for me because I feel like that would have been a much more compelling ending, where like a uh, you know this like friendship bond replaces the bond he was seeking with his father, kind of thing. Yeah, I mean the only kind of resolution we get is that they hug, right? But I mean, and, oh, sorry. Um, can we? Do you guys mind if I jump to the end? Oh, please do. I ask you guys something. Uh, the, like the last line is like him telling his father that he wants to make a movie about him. Yeah. yeah. And then his dad says, make me look good. Yeah. Make me look good. <laughs> yeah. What do you guys, do you guys think Shia made his dad look good? <laughs> well, if that's I, him I, making him look good, I mean, fuck. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I think that it would be a stretch to say that that was making his father look good. Um, I think if anything, it was probably pretty honest, especially considering that they're, you know, apparently talking every day now and whatever. Yeah. Uh, anyone? Um, yeah, I saw, I actually saw an interview uh, about Shia explaining the movie and how, um, it kind of resonated with his dad 
and he was, uh, he was saying how he, he made his dad sit down and watch it, but he wanted to watch his dad watch it Mm -hmm. because that's really like, like besides Shia's like catharticism, it's for his dad, you know, just to reflect on like on himself. And I think that that would have been really cool to see how his dad kind of took it in. Yeah. Uh, his dad was just happy that Henrietta the chicken was in the movie. <laughs> How crazy is that though? He made his career off that. That is yeah, so weird. weird. That was a nightmare when I saw that. Fuck. Yeah. He put the chicken on his ass. Dude, I was about to fucking shut the movie off and go home. But what I didn't understand was like, it wasn't him that was famous. It was his chicken, Henrietta. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was just the clown. Yeah, so that's why I thought a lot of the tension between him and Shia was because Shia was just another chicken for him, you know? And like, okay. but his chicken was taking on like its own, like it, obviously Shia is more sentient than the chicken. And like, was like realizing that his dad was only there for guidance. that would only last so long. Like it was like his dad being in the picture was finite as soon as he got famous enough to like be on his own. Cause that's like a big thing. Like how his dad was only there because he was paying him to be there. Yeah. Stuff like that. So like, it's not something, it's not a conversation you have with the chicken is what I'm saying. It right. seems like a, a pretty convoluted way to call the beef chicken. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> um, I, I, I mean, obviously he doesn't make his dad look good. That's, mm-hmm. that's how it's for. But I, I don't know. I still sympathized with the dad in a weird way. I mean, there are a few really good lines in the movie about the kind of fatherhood that was there. I think it's in the, when he's in his weed field and he goes, ah, oh, seed has to destroy itself for the flower to grow or something. Yeah. I thought that was a really good line for the, uh, the kind of metaphor to the fatherhood where the dad doesn't want to stop being the, uh, the kind of stage persona, this clown that he is. And he wants his son to, uh, kind of not pass his talents, but it's already happened kind of thing. Yeah. I, I also liked, cause Shia said that the, the, the most therapeutic part for him wasn't writing the script, but it was playing the role of his own father. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that like allowed him to sympathize for his father and stop hating him kind of right. thing because it's like once you say the words it takes on a new meaning you know yeah like it's and different hearing it but like having to act it out and like live it be in that position like i feel like that's a completely different perspective you get yeah and i'm sh- there's that one scene in the bathroom where uh the father played by shia says something along the lines of like like how do you think it feels to have your son pay you yeah it's kind of thing Mm. and you can kind of like i don't know it's fucking you can tell shy is like forcing through that line you know Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. AA meeting when he's talking about how much he's speaking as his father and talking about how much he's in pain like yeah i feel like that because he like i'm not talking about or shy as acting chops but like you could tell like those tears were like like he's like thinking about something else like he's obviously thinking about how his dad had felt so many years before and like that was a really hard scene to watch what i mean those are the scenes where you do get to sympathize with uh mm. the dad for sure i mean if anything those are the scenes where it's like maybe it is sort of making him look you know better at least yeah maybe maybe not make him look good but make him look forgivable yeah but I mean, even in those scenes, I didn't really sympathize with the dad. I was like, fucking, the guy's a fucking loser. He can get a job at McDonald's or something. And <laughs> I didn't really feel bad for the dad at all. He's fucking 12 years old, giving his, uh, giving his 12-year-old son weed to show him a weed crop and stuff. Oh, lift your hands up if you have to cough. I don't know. I thought the dad was a real fucking loser. Yeah, well, you don't have to feel bad for him. I mean, you just have to sort of understand that, you know, that he got there just because of, you know, life 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 took him there you know i mean maybe he could have done stuff to you know get out of it or whatever but wasn't he like a war veteran and everything i think so well his jacket says so but he could have got to the thrift store fuck <laughs> stolen valor <laughs> he's stealing valor this time <laughs> well it's his fucking fault for going into business with a chicken dude honestly oh. like oh, what niche he was trying to get to <laughs> <laughs> hey, he just liked the rodeo, man. I'm just trying to think the amount of hazing that you'd get for being a soldier who was a clown with a chicken act before. Yeah. Well, I think, wait, did he do that? Was he a clown before or after he went to war? I hope after. before. I think I mean, it was after. Does it matter? Like, it wasn't in the movie. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> also, I mean, both. Once a clown, always a clown, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's so true. That's a good point. <laughs> uh, what did you guys think about that Tom character? 
You think yeah, I wonder if that, that was, was real. real. Yeah, I don't know. Tom, I think Tom is based off of uh, the actor who played even Steven's dad. Mm. Oh, Tom, interesting. Tom Virtue. Um, which would, you know, make sense uh, in that it was, you know, a stand-in father in a way in real life yeah. for Shia. That's interesting. I wonder if the dad and the actor then had the same kind of uh, friction between them. Oh, on set for I can imagine so. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, his dad was trying to get to feed himself into any role he could on even Stevens. Really? Yeah, he would ask the writer. You know, I could do this part if if you need somebody. You know, he would. So sad. Yeah. Wait. Well, when we need a clown and a chicken, we'll call you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, dude, I was just imagining if I was the, like, I don't know, the director, the producer or something on that set, and then the dad runs in and takes the, like, the leading kid away, like, yeah. take, I would have fucking fired their fucking asses in a second, dude. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can't really fire the kid, it's not his fault. Oh, but just dealing with a fucking stage dad like that? <laughs> what an asshole. Yeah, they could easily just keep him off set. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No ponytails allowed on set. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> what did you guys think about the strip club scene? Yeah, what was the deal with that? I I mean just the dad relapsing, I guess. Okay, but I was I imagined him as an alcoholic. He's doing heroin or something in there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Did they yeah. specify what uh uh, what meeting he's going to because he just I think I only remember Otis saying did you go to your meeting I don't know if it's alcoholics or narcotics anonymous well yeah, they don't specify one of the good lines in the movie is where his dad says well you come from a long line of alcoholics mm, mm, that's true that is a good line true I like um, that line quite a bit he did also do a lot of drugs yeah I know that uh Shia was trying to capture his nasally voice from overuse of uh, cocaine in his uh youth and he oh, ended up putting uh plugs like earplugs up his nose really yeah that's isn't hilarious that reference, isn't that reference some point of the film where he goes i have no septum anymore or something yeah, yeah, yeah. okay Is it? i don't remember that yeah just now that you said I, it, I, I think a, a quick just one second he says i have no cartilage in my nose anymore or something oh. yeah that really happened yeah that's brutal uh um I like how he just rips open like a an empty soda can or something and then just like inhales the fumes coming off of it. <laughs> Buy it. I guess they always kinda they always find a way, don't they? When there's a will. <laughs> <laughs> like, Sprite zero, fuck yeah. <laughs> What'd you guys think about the world this movie takes place in? One of one of my one of my problems with the movie, I was going to say one of my beefs with it, but I didn't want to get confused with the lead actor. <laughs> <laughs> one of my problems with the movie kind of was that, like, in it, we've talked about this before, where you don't need a story in a movie to make a good movie. But in a, in a kind of, like, slice of life movie that we're seeing now, where it's just a kind of relationship on display, um, if the kind of characters in the world don't intrigue you, like, you don't want to live in that world, it kind of mm -hmm. feels that there's still some disconnect. You guys know what I mean? Like, if there's a story in a movie, you can kind of cling to the story as a viewer and go, ooh, I like this story. This is an exciting story. Or if it's just a, like a slice of life movie, you go, ooh, this world is so fun. I wish I could live in this world. These characters okay. are so fun yeah. just to hang out with. But I didn't really feel this way with the world or the characters. I mean, the whole thing shot like sunset, kind of nice lighting and everything, but it's still still a very sad drab world to live in full of these kind of despicable characters okay Did you well guys i mean the whole the whole kind of movie comes from this like this really dark place in shy's mind so i feel like anybody who would resonate with it like that mm -hmm. wouldn't necessarily like maybe they don't have like the best mental health maybe i don't know like i know what you mean though yeah it's, it's like those kind of movies that like is it the, the kind of movies that like you put yourself in? Like, I wonder what I would do in this situation. Like a movie that provokes you like that, or it's just generally like how like you would, would make you want to live in that world. Like uh, my example would be like uh, the Mash movie. I love that movie. 
but there's also it's the same thing there's no story overall in the movie it's just like little little stories that happen but overall the world is so seems so enjoyable and the characters in the world seem so fun you go fuck i wish i was on this army base just walking around or something okay in this world like the story is sad the characters are sad but the world is kind of this light glowy kind of world and i i still felt some kind of disconnect between that like we'd watched uh, Eraserhead last week and that is a the same kind of thing it's a sad world or more of kind of a, an eerie world but the characters are eerie the set's eerie everything about it is in harmony with itself and you still want to live in this world where it's so strange like as a viewer but here well, like i was missing yeah. something keep going yeah sorry oh sorry i was just saying i was missing something that that's an interesting point but that's exactly what i was thinking of the first time i watched it when i thought this whole movie was a jab at hollywood yeah and the whole comment about how he lies for a living like hollywood in general, when you watch movies, like, oh, I wish I was a famous actor. Like, I wish I was a famous producer. But underneath, like, through, like, facades and stuff like that, underneath actors, like, personas is, like, oftentimes a very damaged person, like you see with Shia LaBeouf. Like, you see him in Even Stevens or Transformers. Like, if Honey Boy had never come out and I'd watched Even Stevens or I watched Transformers, I'd think Shia LaBeouf is the man. But yeah. obviously, there's stuff beneath the surface. So the disconnect maybe is kind of a point to actors in general who have that facade, but... I, I really like your reading of the movie, Halen. It's very interesting. Yeah, me too. I, I especially, especially in terms of what you're talking about, Nick, I think it's almost on purpose that mm -hmm. you wouldn't want to live in this world. Because yeah, Shia doesn't even want to live in it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like the, This movie doesn't want to engage the audience mm -hmm. in an immersive way. It wants yeah. to engage the audience empathetically. It wants you to feel for these characters while also being happy that you're not there and you're not them. Mm -hmm. And the, the world looks pretty because, like Halen's saying, like it's the world of LA, you know? It's the world of Hollywood. It's supposed to be all neon and hazy and dreamlike, but yeah. then there's this harsh reality that's happening inside of that dream. It's kind of like uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Where like the whole dynamic between the stuntman and the actor and Hollywood in general, how difficult and like I'm gonna say trivializing, but like how demanding it is on your character and how like crushing it is not to be able to live up to it and how you know what I mean? Like just yeah. the ins and outs of it. Another line I really liked in the movie was when old Otis is in uh, therapy and he says, Why would I want to get rid of my pain? That's the only thing my dad gave me. Yeah, I like that too. That's another really good line. I think that goes with what you guys are saying. Oh, definitely. Yeah, because his, his dad gives him the entertainment business. Yeah. As well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, the whole point of the world is not to, uh, and then, you know, the whole tone of the movie is not to sort of be immersive for the people viewing, but maybe since it's also was written sort of as a therapy for Shia himself, more to be, you know, like, uh, Lee, I think you said it was more of a uh, thing for people to feel empathy. Yeah. Um, but also to relate to the characters if they had been through anything similar in their, in their own experiences, you know? Mm -hmm. Sort of like, um, I know when Shia was looking for the actor to play himself as a child um he on paper the actor who he ended up going with i think his name is noah noah jupe yeah he uh he said you know this this kid's not good this kid's not going to fit in the role at all he's british it, it's a great relationship with his dad <laughs> yeah. and you know he seems like he, he's got his whole life set up for him you know like what the hell i can't like this guy can't relate this kid can't relate to me in any way whatsoever but then going through the interview process and the auditioning process, um, they, he was like, you know, this kid's actually a good actor. And he, this is his own words. He said, he put his baseball cap. He's like, I need you to care for me to take this on this role. You know, I need to see that you can care for me, myself, like not my character, not the movie, but me, like as a person. 
and he put his baseball cap on the kid and the kid was like really touched by the moment and his eyes welled up with tears and then shy was like okay i think you can be good for the part mm. that's pretty so cool. it, was Im- it was important for shia to have uh you know it's it's almost like he's taking his since it's so close to him personally he wanted the whole process to be sort of a safe space for himself and i mean you can't really blame him for wanting that sort of uh protection um he's a sensitive guy after all mm-hmm. most actors probably are that's the um, noah jupe really good acting he is good yeah he's very good lucas hedges too both people who play shia yeah. or otis they're fucking good actors did you recognize them from mid 90s Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Shia LaBeouf said that Lucas is the best actor he's ever worked with, probably, uh, and that he thinks that he uh, has a very bright future in the industry. Dude, bright he's, future. He's already made. Yeah, he's already a star. Fuck. Yeah, he's made I think three nominated films already. Mm-hmm. But I've only seen him in Flex so far. That's but that's the I'm thing. Like... He's already made that, and he's just starting off. You know. Yeah, exactly. He, he is still just starting off. So definitely, uh, I uh, I think Lucas Hedges is one of my favorite actors uh, working today. He's fucking good. Yeah, he's really good. Uh, there is this weird, these weird scenes whenever uh, Otis Future Tense was uh, was in therapy. Um, the first time I thought it was just like maybe just like a coincidence, but every single time he's in his PTSD therapy, he's in front of this like ginormous mural that kind of takes over the screen. And I wonder if that's a coincidence or if it's like, if there's anything behind that. Cause it's literally every single time he's in therapy, mm-hmm. he's kind of like dwarfed by it, you know? Like it's a whole backdrop. That's yeah, it is. It's like about. a trees or whatever, like a park. Yeah. That um, might just be a nice background. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, his, his actual therapy room at, in rehab might look similar and he was just trying to recreate mm-hmm. it. Mm hmm. Who knows? I thought it had something to do with how um, when he went to go scream in the woods, like if that's like where he was heading towards, if that's where the, like the storyline was heading towards, right? Because that's where he kind of made his most like the most of his like progress in his therapy. Mm-hmm. I thought. Yeah, yeah but he kind of uh, undermines that progress by going to see his counselor and like mocking him. Was that real though? Because it seemed pretty sincere. That's like the whole scene. I kind of was with the therapist on that like I couldn't really tell where he was coming from I I think that's part of like Shia's struggle with being an actor is that you know sometimes you don't even know when you're acting anymore yeah okay I think that if he being sincere is he acting I mean both he can't stop doing either Uh, he did a really great job though acting as Shia I thought when he was speaking as Shia fuck uh, yeah like his mannerisms and stuff it came through like I knew instantly like oh fuck he's like doing Shia yep I caught on it dude he he was fucking good the second we see old Otis and he says like I think his opening line I'm like holy shit that sounds like Shia it's weird eh yeah it was cool (laughs) he uh would break into Shia's house and just stay there (laughs) in preparation for the movie (laughs) Shia said that he usually over prepares for movies but Lucas prepares more than anyone he's ever seen oh my god to the point where Shia moved into a a motel off the set and Lucas and Noah stayed in his house. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't even living there. That's so funny. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, scene with the uh, with the therapist, where you, the therapist asks him, "Are you being serious or are you mocking me?" Yeah. And he and he says both. I think that's a really good take on the on the movie as a whole. Like, is it? It's because it sort of has this, you know, this light touch to it. This sort of like not too close sort of feeling to it you know okay almost like i feel like the tone is like yes the the subject matter is very serious but i feel like the tone is not shying away but just being like you know it's not as bad as it seems and i yeah. think that's i think that's kind of what shy was going for because he is trying to find he is finding sympathy for his father and playing the role and he is not trying to paint him out to be a bad guy in the movie just he's just trying to be honest about you know how yeah that's a really good point because it's also maybe that line kind of leaves it up to interpretation for the viewer because when he talks about how his 
like that line you mentioned earlier about how his dad was responsible like his dad the pain he gave him was like the greatest thing he's ever given him because it is his dad who got him into show business in the first place so it's his dad that got him to this point where he could even make this film as part of his therapy so like it's kind of you know it kind of gives you the option to like decide you know like a duality to it Mm, yeah definitely yeah i like i like that point that without his father he wouldn't you know he'd still have all these problems because his father is who he is in his life yeah but he wouldn't have this outlet as an actor to express it and to deal with it but would his father be in his life the same way if his son wasn't his ticket or like in his father's eyes like his yeah like his vicarious like you know yeah it's like mutual exploitation because that was the whole that to me was the whole struggle between the father and son dynamic here is is my dad really here because he's my dad and wants to help me genuinely or is he here because he failed at what he did and I'm doing it better and he like this is like his second ticket you know yeah or is he here just because I'm paying him yeah well that's it I, wonder how much <laughs> paid him. I mean I guess like a real job I wonder because his mean, dad yeah. was in charge of his per diem and like I don't know how much it was back in the day but like I feel like they could like keep like a steady finance to keep a motel for as long as they did yeah well i think under 16 the dad would get all the money that's it right yeah i think so makes sense especially if it's nickelodeon or disney it's definitely like, otherwise disney. it's a lot of money it's a disney lot of money in cash yeah it's definitely disney yeah, because it's it's. I think even Stevens is on Disney Plus or whatever. It's a Disney Channel. Yeah, it was Disney Plus. That's why I want to watch the show now because it kind of gives me a whole other aspect to it. You know, um, I'll, I'll for all the references. Mm-hmm. What was uh, that? I said all all hard pass on that. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see the pain in his eyes? <laughs> <laughs> the pain in his nostril flare. Yeah, it's kind of crazy though. I wonder if Disney had any say in this because it kind of ruins the whole vibe of the show. Like, is it like really like really dark undertone to it now? Like, I mean, they definitely didn't have any say. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. When was when was Holes? When did Chai do Holes? After, because he was kind of he was older than even Steven. Oh, really? Was it after? Yeah, he must have been a teenager by then. Because I remember his like his voice started to get deeper. Like it was all noticeably different in Holes than it was in. Oh, it was the same year. Holes was in two thousand three. Oh. Even Stevens. Oh, okay, even Stevens ended in two thousand three, so it was later yeah, right after. That makes sense. Yeah. How many seasons are there? I don't know. Probably it ran for three years back in two thousand, from two thousand two thousand three. So probably like three seasons, four seasons. I can ask my girlfriend. She watched all of them. <laughs> I think that's okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I wasn't gonna. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's three seasons, one per year. So do you guys um, want to jump into the uh, the next segment scene? of the trail? Yeah. Let's what was jump everybody's right in. favorite scene? Yeah. Nick, favorite I mean, yours, yours yeah. was the, uh, the Transformers <laughs> opening. Yeah, I like that. I thought it was pretty cool. I mean, people talk shit about those Transformers movies, but they're fucking dynamic. Hey, Michael, Michael Bay. Bay. Yeah, Michael Bay for sure. The dynamic. <laughs> he's, a one, he's a one trick pony, but he does it well. <laughs> hey, but the yeah. Transformers with Shia are the best. Like yeah. that, like, he really makes it. Like anything after that, like I could take oh, it. Oh, they made, they made more without Shia? Mark Wahlberg. Who's that? Come on, Marky Mark. <laughs> <laughs> that guy oh, the who, uh, yeah, no, the guy who beat the shit out of that blind dude. <laughs> Allegedly. Or did he beat him blind? I, I don't know. Uh, it's it's unclear. <laughs> that whole story is fucking weird. I, yeah, maybe I'll make it a movie about it. <laughs> Therapeutically, it's yeah. like uh, it's like Rocky Seven, but it's Mark Wahlberg and a blind kid. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not as even a match as in Rocky Seven. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, oh. Joey, what was your favorite scene? Oh, uh, favorite scene, shot, sequence, whatever. Probably where uh, Shia uh, shoves Tom in the pool. Mm. Oh, yeah? 
<laughs> that was awesome. That was yeah. a scene and a half. That was really like I was like nervous watching that. That yeah, one you because I didn't actually rewatch it before this episode, but that's the one that stands out to me still. So that's what I'm gonna go with. Okay. Well, cool. Kind of the only time when the dad is kind of empowered and he's like a father almost. Mm. Yeah. In his own in his own twisted way. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, you don't want some other guy raising your son or something, having some other no, father. Yeah. Go, fuck Tom. Fuck you. <laughs> and then at the same time, I think he goes and uh, he bums a smoke, uh, like young Shia. Yeah. Otis. Otis bums a smoke off him and goes to share it with the 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 girl from the motel. Yeah. The possible prostitute. I don't know where I saw that. I'm pretty sure she was though. I, maybe in the cast. Or but she's something. young though. Yeah, she's like 14 probably. If he, wait, how old is he? He's, he's like 12. 13. 12 in this. He's 12. He's 12. So I'm saying she's like 15 maybe. Oh, I yeah, thought I was she was 18, like. 16. I thought she was like 18 to 19. Yeah. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, I don't think she's a prostitute though because, um, Shia <laughs> LaBeouf playing his <laughs> father <laughs> approaches her at the motel like he does his little clown bit. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't he pull out like a dime bag or something, implying like yeah. let's go get high and fuck? He and definitely approaches like, her. No. Though, I remember that. Yeah, he does approach her. Yeah. Or I think, is it yeah. candy? Did he pull out candy and just eat it? No, I. I think it was drugs. Okay. But if she was a prostitute, she would have. She would have. She would have, been, oh, she would have jumped on that. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking too. Yeah. Well, I I might be wrong because I don't know where I saw that. I'm looking at the cast now, and she's credited as shy girl. So yeah. That's, that's how yeah. Like. I don't think oh, she's that a does prostitute. Not, yeah. Prostitute. Not <laughs> I don't shy. Think the opposite. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a an expensive escort can play that bit. <laughs> I mean, Shifty doesn't. Shifty doesn't dress shy. Her True. nipples are like showing in every single outfit. Okay, I'm, it's just a mint. I just watched it. It's not drugs. It's a mint. <laughs> <laughs> oh, our mistake. There you go. Halen, what was your favorite part uh, or scene or shot or whatever? I definitely loved the last scene where old Otis goes back to the motel and confronts his dad, but he's dressed up in the clown. Yeah. <laughs> that was incredible. I thought they were like, I was so scared, but so like intrigued. And especially when they're speaking in the pool and the chickens walking behind them, I thought that yes. was so cool. Oh, kinda, like, so both true. That was both worlds kind of collide there. I thought that was so sick. The the very last scene is my favorite scene. Like you like you just said, them sitting by the pool. He's dressed as a clown. There's a fucking chicken walking by. Yeah. I yeah, thought that fucking, was fucking sweet. Is his fucking f- clown shoes in the pool? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. Yeah, there's no rules. Clown shoes are like fucking Chuck Taylors or whatever. There's no rules when you're a clown. But I think my favorite standalone shot is probably when old Otis is yelling in the forest. Yeah, that was cool. The, like the, I don't know, it's such a different tone from the rest of the movie because of the colors of the forest. Mm-hmm. And the, it's framed so well with like a nice big tree trunk in the foreground. And then at like, it's like split into thirds kind of thing with like shy, uh, Otis in the one third and then the trunk in the third third. Yeah. <laughs> I liked that. I thought that was a, a, the most, uh, a very well composed shot. That's good stuff. Fun. I like all the underwater stuff too. When he's in the pool, just swimming underwater. I don't really remember that. That's young Otis. Yeah, young Otis. There's a few. There's a few where he's just in the pool, just chilling. Yeah, just swimming around like a little fish. Little fish boy. Yeah, little <laughs> fish boy. <laughs> So on to the third section of this uh, show. Yeah, reviews. If you want to. Anyone have any uh, closing comments before we read some reviews? I think I'm good. I think I said all you'd say. Um, do you guys know who uh, Natasha Leone is? No. Um, do you guys see Russian Doll on Netflix, the TV show? Oh, is she yeah. the girl from uh, American Pie? Yes. Uh, yeah, yes. Okay, okay, okay. And Orange, Orange, Orange is the New Black. Black. Yeah. yeah. I knew that sounded familiar. Yeah, yeah. She's in this. As she's what? Mom. Yeah, she she's plays the, the mom director. on the phone. No, she's the mom on the phone. <laughs> have you seen the director? No. They have the same haircut. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's true. The ginger, right? Like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Curly hair. Yeah. I, I didn't know that. Seeing... Oh, you mean the director, like not the director in the movie, but the actual. No, the Alma. actual, yeah. The right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, they do have the same hair. You are, you are correct. <laughs> Bro, that bitch <laughs> meta for me, dude. 
Dude, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hop into some fucking reviews, boys. Yeah, get some letterbox reviews going. I'm, I'm interested to see what people think of this movie. Yeah, I'm nervous. I hope they like it. Um, yeah, okay, let's let's do some some broad stroke statistics before we jump in then. What's the overall star rating on this? 3.9. Oh. Pretty high. That's terrible. That's terrible. No, out of five, out of five. Yeah, I figured, but like still. Bro, that's almost four out of five. That's good. Yeah, I guess. On uh on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> on Rotten Tomatoes, it's got a ninety-four and a ninety-two. Yeah, see? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Thirty per seven, thirty-seven percent, my bad. Of the reviews are four stars. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So four star is the yeah. You know, it's like eighty uh, percent. What? No, I just said thirty-seven. Oh, you mean four out of five? Yeah. Yeah, four out of five. Yeah. It's like an eighty <laughs> percent. <laughs> yeah. So they, I mean, it did well. It but that's well the thing about this movie. I feel like it's not. It wasn't released for reviews. I feel like it happened, and he had it. And he's like, "Oh, well, I have this movie now. I may as well release it." You know? Definitely. Yeah. So like, it, the reviews don't stick for me. You know? Like, I feel yeah, like it was the movie. it was the creation process yeah. that was the important part for him. And like, how do you how do you give a rating to someone's like therapy or like someone's like you know what I mean? Like, with yeah. subconscious. Usually with know. a number. As strictly as possible. Yeah. The viewers can decide. On them. Yeah, you just on his destroy fucking destroy their money. image. <laughs> um, oh, here's an interesting one. I gave her shitty film a four out of five, and for some reason, director lady blocked me on Twitter, even though I never spoke to her. Call me confused because that don't add up. Oh well, half a star. Don't believe it. So this guy's upset because the director blocked him on Twitter. Well, so he... fuck this guy. I'm gonna block him on fucking Letterboxd. <laughs> yeah fuck you ralph f74 oh okay you guys want to show on ralph for a second <laughs> i don't believe oh, him. you know I what think i think he's lying you think he's, he's BSing? Got, yeah. I don't know, one of his top four movies is suspiria so i don't think i can shit on him anymore which suspiria though oh it is the remake back to shitting on him yeah loser <laughs> What a loser. No, thank you. Couldn't make it past the first half hour, says this letterboxed reviewer. Well, that's no fun, though. I mean, you have to get to the end. Fuck. Yeah, finish the fucking movie. Read I it. know what he means, though. Like, I feel like it kind of, it doesn't really plateau or anything. It kind of just, you watch it and you just kind of sit through it. Yeah, but it's not a long movie. The first half uh, yeah. hour, like, first, two thir first third, just finish it. But, like, you got to go into it with, like, a love for Shia, I think. Like if I didn't know who this guy was, I never would have watched this movie. Yeah, no, yeah, that, I know what you mean. Um, an abusive father returns to his son's life when the latter becomes a Hollywood child star. Having left his job as a rodeo clown, he becomes a 12-year-old boy's guardian and inflicts psychological abuse on him within the privacy of an extended stay motel. Half a star. That's not a review. That's so what is wrong process. with you? Good summary? <laughs> Jesus. That guy wrote the DVD back cover, fuck. <laughs> How do you put a star rating on a summary? Yeah, for real, fuck. That's a five-star summary, though, I'll tell you what. It, it hit the fucking cues, dude. <laughs> oh, here's a good one. Uh, Andrew rated it one star. He says, Honey Boy is some wretched, self-serving garbage. Having bad parents is hard enough. Making bad art about them and demanding people view your trauma as somehow more profound because it's presented in a film is just narcissism. Filmmaking is fine, in all caps. Good, even. The script and Shia needing to cast himself as his own father is just pathetic. I hate Pitiable that. Pitiable and overwrought. Shame on this film. It's fake stance on being a piece of art about processing abuse falls apart every time the button is pushed because of how shallow any level of emotion it brings up. I have crappy parents, bad ones. Like, so, so bad. They even raised me with weird AA traditions that I've had to dismantle. I'd never spend millions of dollars to subject millions of people to my trauma. Not everything is content to be minded. This guy needs a hug, man. Fuck. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Who's forcing him to watch all these movies? Yeah. Yeah. 
Is like, he being is he being forced to watch every every movie ever released? What the hell's going on? Yeah, yeah, for real. Well, so I feel like him saying this is garbage, self serving. That's contradicting because it's not for him to you know like this, the whole idea of self serving is for him to serve himself. Yeah, for it to hold a meaning to himself. Well, the, the whole review is kind of backwards though. Like he's upset at Shia for casting himself, which is the most interesting part of the movie. Yeah, that's like his the most movie. therapeutic thing for him, I would assume. Yeah, yeah, that definitely. Also, he's but, not he's not forcing Shia is not forcing his trauma onto anyone I didn't feel traumatized watching that no but I mean he's not wrong with the first half of it do you mind kind of spinning through the first part of that review again um having bad parents is hard enough making bad art about them and demanding people view it as narcissism or right after that I don't know I mean the the whole thing I don't know do you mind reading a bit more uh, the filmmaking is fine, good even. The script and Shia needing to cast himself is pathetic, pitiable, and overwrought. Shame on the movie. Its fake stance on being a piece of art about processing abuse falls apart every time the button is pushed because of how shallow any level of emotion it brings up. Okay, I don't know what I'm saying. I don't like what he's saying, though. No. <laughs> yeah, I don't... Nothing Nothing really lands for me in this review. It's uh, it's. It just seems like this guy has his own issues and he can't separate his yeah. own issues from his being experience yeah, yeah it's, i'm telling you he must have heard what the movie's about been like oh fuck you i feel worse than you do yeah and then he wrote a review is this ralph again no. <laughs> this is andrew fuck andrew <laughs> <laughs> oh man another one maybe if alma harrell hadn't blocked me on twitter what's with all this twitter beef really yeah maybe- well yeah. now i'm starting to think she's blocking people <laughs> Yeah, now it is true. <laughs> yeah, what the hell is going on? Boring, egotistical, self-indulgent, weird purple and blue Nicholas winding ref in lighting that was very out of place. This feels like something Jonah Hill would make. In <laughs> Australia, all our dads beat us up. You don't see us <laughs> making big song and dance about it. <laughs> to reread that in an Australian accent right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Um, that, that's a fucking good review. <laughs> yeah, I gotta admit, that's a pretty good one. That's a really good that, one. <laughs> he's like, feels like it's directed by uh, Jonah Hill. That's high praise. I liked mid nineties. The director Jonah Hill did right, a though. good job on his directorial debut. Did I a mean, great job. I think uh, it's more well written than it is well directed, though. Yeah, I don't mid-90s? know. Mid nineties. Yeah, it's a pre- it's it's I don't know. It's nothing special directing wise. I thought. Well, it's the same thing as this movie. I didn't know when it ended. I'm like, oh, shit, you know? Yeah, well, like Nick said, it's just a slice of life. Yeah. But in mid-90s, I, I don't know. Like, it was cool. It was a fun experience. Yeah. It was a cool world. Um, boring, egotistical, self-indulgent, weird purple and blue Nicholas grinding ref and lighting that was very out of place. Did it feel out of place? Well, that's kind uh, of a- Sorry, go ahead maybe i don't know i didn't like when is the set like early 2000s i like yeah, I, I hardly think neon is included in architecture that much but i don't know i don't know they're at a fucking shitty motel shitty motels have neon lights yeah, yeah but yeah, also i think for yeah. like movie wise it does give a good feel like you add a few like add some fog machines in there and get some neon going <laughs> yeah like i mean like i said I, I think all that was budgetary you know yeah it's a nice it's, yeah. it's a nice cheap way to make a movie look really good mm. maybe not really good but good professional well to, to get some kind of color in it yeah exactly um yeah. here this guy might have the same issue i was kind of talking about before with the the kind of tone fighting the aesthetic mm. right yeah but i don't know but I mean, who, I mean, that fight might be, you know, part of the movie. Like that, the, the yeah, fight exactly. between the tone and aesthetic is the fight between. Well, I think mother and son, or whatever. Yeah, I think you guys justified it enough for me to change my opinion on it. Okay. I see. I see no uh, no budget info. It made a lot of money, but I'm yeah. seeing no. Uh... Well, it couldn't have cost too much. No, I can't imagine. I, the I shooting. Think... Shooting lasted 19 days. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, exactly. That's pretty cheap. Then. Well, how many? Like, how many? Like, there was the yeah. set, the motel, yeah. and then they left to go. There's a uh, rehabilitation place. 
yeah. and then the wind farm. Like there wasn't much. Yeah. Sure was like three block radius almost. And the most expensive scene was the Transformers thing. Probably, for sure, yeah. easily. Yeah. I, I think there's no info on budget because I imagine he had a pretty unlimited budget. Like I imagine his producers were just like, whenever he needed money, they'd give it to him. Oh, you think but so? He's not, uh, he's pretty well off himself. I'm sure he could, because he wasn't listed as a producer, right? Um, I don't think so. Because it was all uh, outside sources, I guess? Yeah. Like <laughs> Nick, not in a way that they give him an unlimited amount of money, just in yeah. a way that he, you know, he spent so little money that there was no point in needing a budget. Yeah, that, okay, yeah. That's it was just whenever he needed the money, it was easy for someone to give it to him. Yeah. Nothing was specified. Right, yeah, exactly. He wasn't allotted a set budget, just when he needed something, it was never that much, so the yeah. producers forked it over. Um, Honey Boy is an American comedy television series. What? No, it isn't. <laughs> This guy just reviewed Even Stevens, but replaced the name Even Stevens with Honey Boy. Interesting. So, good reviews. Yeah, let's check some goodies. Let's see what's up. I knew I would like it because of Shia LaBeouf. Notwithstanding, it still blew my mind. The trauma your parents instill intentionally or not can be the thing that destroys you, and I've never seen that depicted so raw. Eh. Okay. I mean, there's a lot more harsh fucking movies where you can see some real uh, child abuse, but I mean... Yeah, it also doesn't destroy Shia. That's kind of the whole point. Yeah. (laughs) But this is one of those things where, like, I think it's called generational trauma, where it kind of... It's like... it It's generational, so it it affected your father throughout the stages of his life. Mm -hmm. So it's going to affect you as he brings you up, you know? So it's like... Not necessarily Shia's problem to deal with, but he has these issues because his dad has these issues, you know? So it's kind of cool. That is that is one thing we didn't talk about was the dad's trauma. It was mm-hmm. very strange. It, his mom was a lesbian, and then her girlfriend used to beat him up. Yeah. Well, that's, I think I yeah, missed her, that. No, <laughs> yeah. Her hand was always broken because she was always punching him so hard. That is a strange story. I thought they were talking... I thought he was talking about his mom. I didn't know she had... Uh, she was a lesbian. Yeah, she, yeah. Um, oh, okay. But then also, <laughs> there's a part where I think old Otis in therapy says that even his dad's AA stories were stolen from everybody else's AA mm-hmm. stories. <laughs> That's true, yeah. So it's like, who do we, do we believe him about his own trauma? Who knows? Yeah. Well, I mean, he became a clown after with the chicken. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Something traumatic happened to this guy. Um, five stars. I adore artistic memoirs about strained family relationships because parents are usually the first people you see that are not as perfect as they seem. Mm -hmm. Pain and trauma are somewhat hereditary and attempting to overcome that is a process that requires a lot of falling apart before being put back together. There's that seed line you were saying. Yeah, yeah, This was the guy's therapist who wrote that review? (laughs) Shia LaBeouf wrote this (laughs) and plays as his abusive father. Such profound empathy. There is so much pain, but there is also a sense of gentleness. Like if healing and forgiveness was a movie, this would be it. Yeah. <laughs> that review shaped up well. Yeah. That 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 last sentiment, I think, is exactly what Shia was going for. Yeah. It's you know, it's it's all about healing and forgiveness, just moving past it. But I mean, even then, the the redemption at the end, the healing, it, it's it seems very shallow. It's weed. <laughs> yeah, they just smoke it. <laughs> 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 they sort of join and hug each other. I mean, I don't know. They don't even cry or say anything. Uh, yeah. I don't well, know. If, if that's been your father throughout, you know, God knows how long, then that yeah. scene is pretty powerful for you when it does come. Like, yeah. <laughs> but that's a good point, though. Like, to what extent does his father have this role in his life? Like that last scene where they're going to the dope field, mm-hmm. like where they kind of make up is his dad continuing to be like a negative influence in his life. Like he is now, or does it kind of shape up after that? And just the scenes that we saw are what gives him his PTSD. Like, I feel like it kind of gives you like, it doesn't really answer like how to, to what extent does it go? You know? Yeah. Like there's resolution, but like, is that really it? Like, is that like, yeah. And with the abuse and stuff like that, like, 
Well, I think I, we're missing the second half of his life, though, to see what happens later. Exactly. Right, exactly. And, and I think that's the point, right? It's, mm-hmm. it's because this, you know, healing and forgiveness isn't something that happens in the span of one movie. You know, it's, it's a process. And if, if things would have wrapped up and if Shia LaBeouf would have had complete closure with his father when he looked at him and said, I wrote a movie about you, he would have never made the movie. Because mm-hmm. that would have been it. He would have, you know, he would have forgiven. He would have been healed. So the fact that he had to make this movie to continue the therapeutic process, mm-hmm. you know, plays into why the ending feels so open and so unresolved. I was sad at the end, though. I did have uh, some kind of emotional reaction for Shia at the end. Yeah, I teared up at the very end when he's like, yeah. uh, make me look good. And then Otis kind of just like smirks and looks away. Yeah, it takes a fat drag. <laughs> Pussies. Um, there's a lot of foreign language reviews. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and oh, automatic. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, yeah, but they all just say didn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, uh, honestly, I've always kind of had a soft spot for Shia LaBeouf in my heart, even though he screwed up and done some things people may see as weird or controversial. That being said, I think this film was very important both for audiences to see into a life of a child struggling to find love in the person he lives most, and for Shia as he is forced to confront his past trauma. This film literally ripped my heart out, and I was not okay after this. Uh, I hope when people watch this, they see him in a new light and appreciate his work as he gave his childhood for it. I do, though. That's exactly what I felt. Like, just seeing even Steven so differently now, like, that's exactly... But also, what has he done that's so controversial? Like, I was, think... Is junk driving? No, but he did a lot of performance art stuff in between movies. Yeah. He remember he put a paper bag over his head to like a red carpet event, and he wrote, "I'm no, I'm not famous anymore." Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. that whole thing he did when he was watching his movies, right? Exactly. The theater. Yeah. He showed, his, he showed his dick a lot too, I think. In a lot <laughs> yeah. He, yeah, well, he in like do, public parks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but he did do a lot of performance art. Yeah. yeah. But I mean. It kind of feels like this is him kind of explaining himself almost. Like just this movie? Behavior? Yeah, like justifying what he's doing. I'm not a weirdo. It's my dad's fault. Yeah, okay. I did feel that as well. But I mean, performance art isn't that weird to start with. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think... If uh, anything, I think the it's just not to explain himself. It's just that all that was sort of like cries for help in a way. Mm-hmm. You know, him trying to express himself like as in a way that would get as much, you know, attention as possible. Yeah. And then he realized that maybe, you know, he he did have something more, more personal and more, mm-hmm. you know, to mm-hmm. say something more uh, <laughs> sincere, I guess. I think if it, I think I would have I would agree with you, Nick, if this movie came about differently. Like if he did something, like if one of his uh, performance art things got like a super bad review, yeah, and he made this movie as a response, then yeah, but he literally, you know, his therapist told him to write a movie, Mm -hmm. and then he did, and he's like, "Fuck, that helped a lot. I'm gonna make the movie and see if it helps more." Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, like he he did do this movie for very personal reasons. I don't think he did it for anyone else. Yeah. Um, speaking of showing your dick in a park, they, oh. uh, they mentioned that he's a, a felon because he's a sex offender. His father? Yeah. Like, you know why he's a sex offender? Did yes. He his mom? Yeah, he raped Shia LaBeouf's mom. That's how Shia LaBeouf, uh, was conceived. No way. Oh, I thought it was because he put a chicken on his ass. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's more pedo than anything. Um, no, he didn't, he didn't actually rape her. They say it in the movie. I think um, you mean pedo. He, yeah, he was drunk driving with her in the car and he says he doesn't remember what happened. He wakes up he as a sex offender. Did, yeah, he knows he didn't rape her, but he did enough to make her jump out of a moving car. Oh, he said he knows he didn't rape her. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought he did. I thought he did. Okay. Case closed. Yeah. <laughs> Call he the knows. <laughs> How could he rape her if he knows he didn't? <laughs> <laughs> I want to know how he raped someone in a in a moving vehicle. I was wondering that too, dude. The car's moving. What are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Dump gear and you fucking. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> Henrietta was down at the gas pedal. <laughs> That's a good trick. Yeah, <laughs> I'll make my dick disappear. <laughs> anyway, um, I literally bought popcorn from my sister just to rewatch this emotional masterpiece. <laughs> what does that mean? Is that a euphemism? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. Would we think that that was not literal if he didn't say literally? I don't know what that means. What a I don't strange know. review. Yeah. <laughs> I literally... Is that the end? That's it. That's the whole review. What the hell was that? Was yeah. It, he literally got popcorn from his sister? Yeah, just so he could watch this again. But is that supposed to be a, a like a, a trying activity? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just like it's a it's a testament to how much of a flick it is, so that he needs to have popcorn with it, maybe. Maybe. Loosely. Sis, get oh. fucking Dr. Rutger. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get some freaking Redenbachers in here. <laughs> oh, Dr. I'll pay any price. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> I don't yeah. like that review. That was I a know. strange review. <laughs> it makes no sense. That's an interesting one. <laughs> oh, here's here's an interesting one beautiful camera work lighting and score the sincerity and sensitivity of each performance was breathtaking it is heart-wrenching and unique and raw and triumphant and unsettling and cathartic all at the same time i am in awe this guy had a thesaurus when he wrote the fucking (laughs) The favorite dinosaur. <laughs> um, yeah, the rest of the review is just like kind of masturbatory or whatever, but yeah. beautiful camera work, lighting, and score. We didn't mention the score at all. Yeah, there's a few good tunes in there, like the montages. I remember I was watching it. I was just, I had my laptop right here. I, uh, my stuff today. Oops, someone's crunching right. away. Someone's yeah, crunching. Uh, well, what's going on there? Oh, there's uh, there's a good few. Start over. Start from the top, Haley. We missed all that. I uh, I had it playing today as I was just doing my like chores and stuff, and uh, there's a few good tunes that made me like stop and like just listen to it. Like I really enjoyed the score. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I didn't notice it at all. All the montages are good. Uh, good tunes. There are some good montages in this movie, though. Like him with the prostitute, allegedly. Uh, all of those montages are really good. Oh, um, when they're like dancing and pretending to play baseball. Yeah, like yeah. rubbing each other's faces and stuff like that. And yeah, the, that's. Like, game. That's when the dad's smoking meth in the bathroom. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, that was a good. You're right. But I mean, as for the camera mark, I, I wasn't. I was not impressed. No, me neither. It's pretty much just like, like you said, like a floaty handheld. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you get a steady cam and a shallow lens, and you walk around. Yeah, it's not the most uh, hard to fucking do shit. I, the lighting's nice, though. The lighting is very nice. Yeah. Okay. So we can all agree there. Um. <laughs> All right, well, uh, Halen, what's your review? Out of 10, 10 stars? Yeah. Oh, Halen, Final. Keep, in, keep in mind, though, we are using a average being five scale. So five is a perfectly average acceptable movie. Okay. Um, well, I still maintain that this isn't a movie that would fit in any other genre because I think it's like it's more for Shia than for anybody else. So I think... As a movie, first of its kind, I'd give it an 8.2. Oh, very, very high rating. Um, which would make it, if it's first of its kind, probably a 10 for reference for any other movie like it. But I think 8.2. I okay. think it does what it's what it's supposed to. And it's a movie I could watch over and over just because I, I just like the way it looks. I like the way it sounds. What do you mean first of its kind? Well, because I think it's its first, there's no genre that it fits into, you know? It's like the guy said it's garbage self-serving. I think it is self-serving. It's like, it's Shia's genre, you know? It's not like, 
it's a movie that came from a very dark place and a dark, um, uh, I don't know how to say it. Can I try and put it in a genre? Yeah, try. S- semi-autobiographical. Okay, yeah. but just the way, just the fact that it's a byproduct of therapy, I think just what it's trying to do generally, I think it does what it's supposed to, but I can't put it in a genre where I could compare it to another movie. Yeah, I know what you mean, Halen. I'd say 8.2. I'd say it's, okay. It's a You're saying movie. it's unique. It's unique enough to to sort of you know stand on a buy. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Joey, um, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a um, seven. Seven out of ten. I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was good. I liked the. Uh, I thought the performances were particularly good. I think I, that's actually what took it away for me. Um. Other than that, I wasn't particularly impressed. Uh, you know, I thought the whole cinematography, directing, uh, writing was was good. You know, decent, but not as standout. I think the uh, the performances uh, raised the bar. Okay, for, of the movie. Nick, so, you want to go first, yeah. or should I? Oh, I don't mind whichever you prefer. Um, go ahead then. Um, well, talking to you guys, uh, I seem to maybe appreciate the movie more than I did on first viewing. Um, because I mean, the direction's lackluster, but the performances are very good. Um, I'm going to give it a, uh, six and a half. Oh, interesting. I was, I did get the emotional reaction at the end, but I thought as a narrative, I'm, I'm picturing it as a movie though, as like a film, as a, a solid piece of art. I thought it felt kind of unfinished the narrative wasn't really there it's more the kind of extra textual stuff that's more interesting than the movie yeah. itself. like yeah. if you don't know anything about Shia LaBeouf if you just came out of a, a Russian gulag and this is the first movie you watch <laughs> you go okay yeah I guess it's some kind of interior drama about relationships and parenthood but I mean I, I, I was missing something still in it maybe it was the direction or maybe the, the story itself but I'm giving it a six and a half yeah, I, I think I'd probably give it like a six on ten. Mm. I think its biggest flaw is that it's it fails to be anything more than the sum of its parts. Mm-hmm. Well, there is some magic at the end, though, in that kind of final scene you guys were talking about. There's a bit of magic. Yeah, but like like you've been saying, it doesn't really tie that much together. No, yeah. Um, and it's, it's biggest pro is definitely the acting though. Mm-hmm. I think we can all agree there. Yeah. I think it's kind of hard to tie together with itself when it's constantly jumping back and forth like that, you know, like there's never really yeah. a set things like it's not very linear. That's an interesting point because it was actually written very linearly. Shia wrote, wrote it like as completely linear and the director decided to, uh, you know, chop it up and chop it up yeah, I didn't know reorganize that. Yeah. it. I like, I like the choppy. You do. I kind of thought. Well, like when you want to cross cut between two timelines, you'd want each timeline to complement each other. So like one timeline would explain something about the other. And I felt that these just felt like it was a pieces cut together and just put together checkerboarded like. Like oh, yeah? they didn't say anything to each other until the very end when you get that, uh, like the hug side by side and you see it in both timelines. Other than that, they didn't really explain much in between. I liked what Halen said about it that it was nice getting like the cause and effect throughout yeah well that's it because the a lot of the cuts back and forth um like there was one that pops in my mind right now where he's screaming in the past and it jumps to him screaming in the forest like his therapist suggested Mm. um so it's kind of like that like it kind of like it it weaves and bobs nicely like it's not like the cuts aren't harsh so it's still you still get that cause and effect feeling about how he's feeling post or during therapy and before like what led to it yeah so I think the cuts i think they're very very nicely uh choreographed um but i agree with nick that it's kind of hard like it doesn't really well round into a movie mm-hmm. like there's no like grand revelation at the yeah. end yeah yeah but it, it was fun i enjoyed watching it i had a good time nice sad movie yeah it's good to hear, yeah, I did enjoy it. 
Yeah. Good choice, Alan. Thanks, man. Yeah, thanks for coming on, guys. Of course. Hey, yeah. thanks. Thanks for coming on, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> hey. the the ball. <laughs> That's a different Zoom meeting. I am the, I am the captain now. <laughs> Any uh, any last words? Uh, oh, are you are you murdering us right now? <laughs> yes. Oh Jesus! <laughs> when this fucking meeting ends, so will you. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. In that case, uh, be kind to one another. <laughs> uh, gay dude, are you Ellen generous? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, as a reference. Well. Fun podcast. Thanks for coming on. Always nice having uh, some guests. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thank you guys. Um, you can, uh, Halen, you want to plug anything? Joey, you want to plug anything? Just follow me on Instagram. What are you doing? There you go. What's your handle? At Halen with two Y's after the A. Cool. <laughs> Joey, you want to plug anything? Uh, yeah. Monolith Films Podcast on YouTube. Oh Bye. yeah, me too. Monolith Film Podcast. <laughs> on YouTube. Well, they're already watching the show if they're listening <laughs> to this part, guys. Yeah, that's what I want to plug. Um, all right. Well, you can email the show at monolithfilmclub at gmail.com. You can find us on Instagram and Twitter at monolithfilmpod. You can find Nick and I's personal Instagrams through the monolith one as well. Um, we're going to be doing Fellini's Casanova next. <laughs> That's going to be so stupid, that episode. I'm excited. So, fucking look forward to that, guys. Have, and, have you uh, watched it yet, Lee? I have not. I'm very excited. Oh, okay, well, it's fun. Sorry for cutting you off. No, no, no. Um, so yeah, so until we do Casanova, um, fucking take a sleazy, watch the movie.